are Sun and Moon overrated? Well, uh, eh, oh, I'm doomed no matter what I say. Sun and Moon are the fictional characters from the Five Nights at Freddy's series, which originally was developed by Scott Cawthon starting all the way back in 2014. It was only him for the longest time until 2019, where we got the announcement that Scott was working with an indie studio known as Steel Wool Studios to create a bigger FNAF game. This would go on to be Help Wanted. It was a massive hit justifying more FNAF games, leading to the next one, Security Breach. Security Breach was a big step for the franchise, introducing a new location, new gameplay, and new characters. Each FNAF game had its cast of animal animatronics, and this game was no different. But as more footage came out, people started noticing these two jesters. They looked completely different from the norm. Many fans, like myself, were wondering how they would be in the game, if they would be any good or forgettable since this game had so much other things going on. The open world, the new line of animatronics, and a villain that had been hyped up for quite some time. This was shaping up to be the greatest FNAF game ever. December 16th, 2021. My opinions of this game will have to wait another day, but for the meantime, it's fair to say the launch could have been way better. The many people like myself playing on day one did have a good experience early on, especially in the introduction of the Superstar Daycare, where everyone, who didn't even know it at the time, were about to meet the duo that would steal the hearts of many. Before I talk about these guys, I'd like to quickly mention if you enjoy this video, consider giving it a like, and while you're down there, consider giving my Twitter a follow, and also join the Discord server. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy FNAF content, or Sun and Moon in general. I got videos about them already on the channel, and an Eclipse one that you should check out. Actually, just the Eclipse one. I've technically already made a video about these two, but here's the thing. It was my first video, and... Sun and Moon. You clicked on this video knowing fully well who these guys are. Bye, if I oh, stop guys. it, stop it, stop it. I already hate it. Uh, anyways, while I agree with what I said, I feel like I can make that video again, but better, while also bringing something new to the table. You see, in the video, I explained why they got so popular, but now I feel it's fair to talk about if they even should be that popular. I also want to talk about another factor into why I believe they're so successful that I failed to mention in my first video. To understand this, we need to talk about Foxy. Yes, really. I need you guys to just really stick with me on this one. I know you guys want me to talk about the silly jesters, but to have full context, we must go back to 2014. The good old days where you sit in the office being hunted by five animatronics, all of which in the fandom were loved, but none as much as Foxy. He is what I argued was the most popular FNAF character for the longest time. It really came down to his brilliant design with him being torn and broken, which went perfectly with that pirate theme. It really made him feel like he was the one who'd been through it all and genuinely was just cool. As much as the fandom loved him, it didn't really show within the game's universe. When looking around this pizzeria, you'll quickly see a lack of Foxy representation. The hallways showing the characters, doesn't include him, and in the iconic Celebrate poster, has zero mention of him. Now, one could bring up how he is out of order. That's fair, however, you'd think there'd at least be one poster of him when he was fixed. I was gonna mention how he at least had drawings of him done by kids, but no. I looked through the renders and apparently there are none of him, at least in the first game. Foxy felt really separated from the crew, and enough to justify fan fictions making up stories of why he's casted out in the first place, or even how being alone makes him sad. Heck, there was a whole song about that idea, made by a dickhead. What does this have to do with Sun and Moon though? Well, these characters are popular within their respective eras of the series, so I feel it's fair to find some sort of bridge that connects them of why exactly they were the ones to pop off. This brings me to my point of how Sun and Moon are separated like Foxy into their own area, enough to where they can stand on their own. Most people would think I'm looking too deep into it, and it's really just because they're two silly jesters. However, if that really was the case, then how come someone like Circus Baby doesn't have their fame? Don't get me wrong, she definitely has her fans, but not nearly on Sun and Moon's level. The things around the character matter just as much as the character themselves, and Baby has a story going on throughout Sister Location at Pizza Simulator, leaving not much room for fan interpretation. Sun and Moon, however, don't have a story going on like Baby, so if they don't have a story, what do they have that people enjoy? Comfortability. But where does this comfortability come from? Well, Foxy and the daycare attendants both have that underdog theme if you think about it. Both are separated from the main crew and kind of have their own thing going on. And let's be real, people love to root for the underdogs. So, it causes a connection to happen, 
leading to comfortability. It's also the characters themselves within the personality that make people enjoy them so much. Sun is pretty easy to explain with his upbeat, positive attitude, creating a very charming character in a game where everyone is out to get ya. A sweet, innocent character like Sun was definitely going to win some people over. Moon, on the other hand... Yeah, I can't lie, it's hard to explain why someone who wants to hurt you is considered a comfort character. If I had to make a good guess, it's that if you aren't Gregory and follow the rules in the daycare, Moon can actually be pretty nice. I mean, in Security Breach, he does seem like he's only doing his job, being to get those who are up past their bedtimes. Now, he has an extreme method of doing that, but hey, still just doing his job. I don't really think the main villain, Vanny, had anything to do with Moon coming after Gregory like it's presumed she did with the other animatronics. As there's a note you can find that explains a bad customer experience one had with Moon, so it leads me to think that as long as you obey the rules, Moon isn't that bad. Another reason for the comfort is just the daycare in general. I mean, look at this place. Screw the kids, I want to spend the day here. I'll Scrooge McDuck into that ball pit, go down every slide, get lost in the maze for hours on end. I'm pretty sure that's the mentality of a lot of people as well. There's no characters quite like Sun and Moon in the games, or even the franchise itself. It's their uniqueness and charm that make it such a comfort for many, with some going out of their way to make their own stories about them, which is another great factor into the success of these guys. There are plenty of fan interpretations going around the web, but if there was one I'd say kept the lasting powers of these characters alive, I'd say is a little known channel called The Sun and Moon Show. Alright, I'll try to keep this short since I do have a whole video on them, So, The Sun and Moon Show is a kid series on YouTube using characters from Security Breach to create their own lore and characters while doing normal stuff like Let's Plays and Reactions. It's owned by Blackshore, which is a YouTube network with multiple channels under its belt. FNAF related channels are only some of the things Blackshore does, but alone there's like 9 of these guys. Some of these characters line up really make no sense, like Monty and Foxy? Who would ever want to watch them together? The duo are so full of themselves they have to watch some review of their show to feel any sort of validation. Hey wait a second. Out of all of these, the Sun and Moon show is the most popular even though it wasn't the first. The original was Freddy and Funtime Freddy show that premiered a whole year prior, yet the Sun and Moon show grew to be the most successful sitting at over half a million subscribers. They definitely marked their place in the FNAF fandom, as if you talk about the actual characters of Sun and Moon like I did here on a community post, you'll get people talking about the show that has no official connection in the game series. Notice how this whole video I've been talking about everything around these characters, yet not once have I mentioned how they are in the game? It leads me to answer the question of the video. Are Sun and Moon overrated? Honestly? Yeah. They play a very small role in Security Breach. But maybe, just maybe, less could be more. Let's go over it. In Security Breach, once you enter the daycare, the mission is to get the security pass and meet up with Freddy afterwards. However, you must go down the slide and... Wait for it. Wait for it. Hey, who the fuck are you? Check it out, Michael. I'm off the park. This is where we meet Sun. He picks us up from the ball pit and sets us down on the floor to discuss what an amazing sleepover we'll have. I'm not too much of a fan of the way he was touching me, so I have to remember what Sonic said. First, you say no. No. Then, you get out of there. Damn it. Yeah, attempting to leave will result in Sun following you and taking you right back. So, to counter this, we push over the barrels nearby to create a distraction. It gives us enough time to go to the desk and check for a security badge. Sun attempts to warn us about being back there, but fails to take into account of when I asked. So once grabbing the badge, the lights go out and we meet Moon. He is meant to punish all who break the rules, and the only way to stop him is to flip five generators located around the daycare, where once flipping the last one causes the lights to come back on. We're able to leave, however Sun decides to come in and kick us out for breaking the rules, alerting the animatronics of our presence. Freddy is thankfully here, and we're able to hide inside him. That's all Sun does in the game, and as for Moon, he comes around every hour to hunt the player down, with the only way to stop him being to go into a recharge station. That is all their time in Security Breach. That honestly isn't a lot, and leads me to consider them overrated with how little they contribute to the overall game. Sun and Moon would return in the sequel DLC released two years later called Ruin. At this point, the love for Sun and Moon got so big you could consider this a sub-fanbase within the FNAF community. 
So many were wondering if now since the audience for these characters have grown, if they play a bigger role with some assuming Sun would help you throughout like how Freddy did in Security Breach. July 25th, 2023. Ruin finally released and uh, Sun and Moon basically got the same amount of screen time. Now, this is a shorter experience. So maybe they were able to impact more. The DLC follows Cassie trying to find her friend Gregory, who seems to be trapped under the pizza plex. The game is divided in 9 chapters, and chapter 2 has Cassie going to the superstar daycare. This is where Moon comes in and gives a quick scare before Sun takes over the body and asks for our help. What we need to do is help reboot and make him whole, since Moon is proven to be a control freak. Seeing how Moon wants to hurt us and Sun doesn't, we reasonably help him out by turning on the spotlights that keep Moon at bay until we turn on the last one where now we need to reboot him and... Happy I'm not doing the joke. I've done it twice already. If you know, you know. This introduces Eclipse, who quickly became just as popular as Sun and Moon simply for how adorable most found him. I mean, it's like looking at a puppy. You're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you? Yeah, in the face. Why? I got a whole video on Eclipse that I don't hate unlike another video, so I recommend checking that out afterwards if you're interested. Other than that, that's pretty much it in terms of screen time for both Sun and Moon. In terms of the future, Moon is confirmed to be in the next FNAF game, however, even with all this, it's fair to call them overrated with how little they play in the game series. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy these characters at the end of the day. I can't say Sun or Moon are in my top 3, 5, or even 10 favorite FNAF characters, Though for others, it's completely fine to either love them or hate them. The hype around them at least makes sense with how different they are compared to the rest of the animatronics we've seen throughout the series. Then there's also their great design plus the world they live in, and I can't stress enough the amazing performance done by Killing Goff. <laughs> oh my little blueberry, you didn't make this video calling them overrated just to get this clip of you simping for them off your back, did you? No, I can't do it. They take it anymore. <laughs> I gotta smash up my boss. I must. I must. I must smash up my must. I must. I must. I must. I must. I must. I want them to on top of me. I want them on top of me. I want them to make me whimper and cry under them. I must. I must. I must. Whoa. 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 Hi. Oh my god. I. Uh. Um.